Hi, and welcome to the fifth video in our PowerShell 7.2 for Intermediate tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tester, which is used for unit testing or running tests against like environments, against your modules to make sure that the code is doing uh, what it's supposed to be doing, or if you're using against like an environment or a deployment to make sure that the deployment went successfully. Uh, so we're going to be mostly doing kind of the example of the deployment, um, but if you're testing a module, it really works the exact same way. So let's actually go ahead and let's dive in to Pester. Um, so Pester is a module uh, that comes pre-installed on your Windows machines. Um, you don't really have to import the module. The module is just there um, once you create the layout that you need to. Uh, you can then easily invoke the pester script. So let's actually go ahead and let's see how we can write out our pester script here. So we're just going to do a um, create a file here called pester test.ps1 and let's get started. So the first couple things that we need to do in a pester test is there are three keywords that we need to know. Um, so the first one is going to be the describe keyword. So we're just going to put that in here like that. And then what we just need to do is we just need to put a string here, which is going to give us the name of our, basically this is like the highest level of our test, the name of it. So if you're doing something for like a module test, um, it would probably be the name of your module, like testing, um, configuration module, or in this case, we are going to have checking deployment uh, because we're going to be checking our server deployments. And then we're going to do an open and close curly bracket. And then in here, we're going to have our second keyword, which is going to be the context keyword. And then again, as you probably guessed it, we're going to have another string here. And this is going to be what part of that process that we're doing. Uh, so it's a little bit of a higher level, but not the exact thing that you're doing. Uh, so for this one, since we are checking the deployment, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the Windows services are either running or stopped. Uh, another example of what you would check in this level uh, for a deployment would be um, checking whether or not features are installed or not. That would be another example. Uh, for a module, this would be maybe checking the environment, making sure that the module is available, making sure that you can import the module, um, something like that, or just to um, describe uh, like module functions, testing module functions would be another one. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's just put checking Windows services, and then again, open and closing curly bracket. And then the last part here is going to be the it keyword. And again, we're going to do a string here. And this is going to be your actual uh, tests. So this would be an individual item for each test that you do. So this would be making sure that the module imports correctly, making sure that this function in the module is working, uh, making sure that this service is running or this service is stopped making sure that this feature is installed, making sure that this feature is not installed. Again, all depending on what you really want to test. Um, so let's go ahead and let's say here, our test is gonna be making sure the print spooler is running. We're gonna have an open and close uh, curly bracket once again. Now this is where we are actually going to write our test. So what we need to do to make sure the print spooler is running, we, we need to get the print spooler service. We've already seen this in multiple videos. That's why I'm taking the services and the checking and deployment. Um, because if you've been following along this whole series, the beginner series and the intermediate series, uh, this is gonna be very, very familiar to you what we're doing. Uh, so basically what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be grabbing the service from a remote computer and we are going to be checking that status to make sure that it is running. So what we're going to first do here is we're going to do a service equals invoke command. And then uh, computer name. 
And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put in a variable here called computer name. And then we're going to put in credential and then we're going to do credentials. Now, this is going to be very, very uh, relevant if you've watched the last video. Now, of course, if you are writing a test to just test it against a local computer, you would not have to do the invoke command. You would just be able to do the get service commandlet. Um, but we're going to make this a little bit more useful, um, seeing that you only want to really write a test once and then be able to use that test against all your machines in your environment. Um, so doing it remotely is very, very useful. So once we have the computer name, we have the credentials. We're going to put in our script block here and then open and close curly bracket. And all we're going to do is get service. And since we already know what service we want to get, we want to get the spooler service. So once we have the service in our variable here, what we want to do is we want to do a service dot status. We'll pipe that to should be. And so this is another Esther keywords should be. And then you want to give it the output that it should be. So we know that the status, oops, the status of service, not server, um, service status should be running. Um, and then we have our closing. And then the only thing that we need to add at the top here, because um, pester tests are very similar to how you would write a module or anything like that, or a function, you can actually put parameters here. So let's do a param at the top, open parentheses here, we're going to put computer name. And we are going to put credentials. Um, this way we could pass these values in and we could actually then call them. Uh, so once we have that here, uh, that should be good. So now that we have this, we might be wondering how can we actually call this uh, and actually run the test. So this is where we would actually create another script here. So we're going to call this one main.ps1 here. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do an invoke, uh, invoke pester. So invoke dash pester. And then we have a parameter called script. So once we have our script here, what we're going to do is an open close parentheses, and we are going to actually go ahead and run our script here, which is going to be uh, pester test.ps1. And then inside the parentheses, we can actually put in our parameters here. So let's do computer name. My computer name is going to be 172.30.123.5. And then the credentials here, we are just going to do a get credentials. So if we actually run this right now, so it prompts me for my credentials. So let me just put in my username and password here. So here we run the test, as you can see, test completed in zero milliseconds, uh, passed is zero, failed is zero, skipped is zero, pending is zero, and inconclusive is zero. But it does seem like the test works. So when we look at the results of our test here, we can see describing, checking deployment, context is checking Windows services, uh, making sure that the print spooler is running. And then the string links are both seven, but strings differ at index zero. So we expected running, but we got stopped. Uh, so it failed the test. But at the bottom here, we don't really get the results of our test. So what we actually want to do here is create a variable right above our test here. And I'm going to call it script parameters. And we're going to make that equal to a hash table. So we're going to do an at symbol and the curly bracket. And then the first value we're going to put in here is going to be the path. And we are just going to simply copy the path to our pester test file. And then all we want to do is add another parameter called parameter and then once we have or parameters sorry and then we're going to make that equal to another 
hash table. And then in there, we're going to put computer name, uh, but no dollar sign here. It's just computer name is going to be equal. And we're going to put in our string here, 172.30.123.5. And then our credentials, once again, just no dollar sign or dashes in front of it. And we're going to make that equal to get credential. And then instead of having this bracket here so all i'm going to do actually is we're just going to copy that we're just going to put this above it so i can show you guys the difference between the two and then for the script value what we're going to do is we're going to put in script parameters so if we actually run this here again we're going to put in the username for that computer So here we ran the test and actually here we can actually see test completed in 522 milliseconds, passed zero, failed one. So we know that we failed one test and there was only one test. Uh, so we see that we expected running, but it is stopped. Um, so if we actually just change our test here to say that it should be stopped and then we should be stopped here just so you guys can see what a successfully completed test looks like. All we need to do now is run our invoke pester because we already have the script parameters loaded. Here we have our describing checking deployment, context checking Windows services, making sure that the print spooler is stopped. And this is actually in green now. So we know that it passed test completed in 511 milliseconds, passed one, failed one, skipped zero, pending zero, inconclusive zero. So we've actually run all of our tests. So as you can see, this could be super, super useful if you have a bunch of different computers. Um, and again, similar to how we talked about in the remoting video, if you were in the same domain um, and you're running the script as an account that already has access to all the different servers, you wouldn't need the credentials. So all you would really have to do is you know, take in a list of servers. Maybe you're going to get that from Active Directory. And you want to make sure that all your servers have the print spooler turned off um, for the vulnerabilities, except for your print server. Your print server should be turned on, but all the rest of the servers, your print spooler should be turned off. Uh, so that would be a great test that you can actually do with Pester and then get those results back and then fix those, those servers. Now, of course, there are a lot of other ways that you could handle that situation. You can have a script running on each computer, just constantly making sure that the print spooler service is turned off. Um, but the tests are really, really useful, especially if you're writing modules um, and you're expecting certain outputs. Uh, so you would code your pester to call your module and invoke different functions in your module. Um, another one would be if you're using APIs or something, uh, what you could do in your pester is do an invoke web, um, a web request. So you'll get the response code back and you just want to make sure that the response code is a 200 is a success because you want to test to make sure that the API is written properly. Uh, the API is actually online. So if you get something like a 404 or 400, you know that something is wrong and you can actually go in and fix it before you push that new code to production. So that's where pester is very, very useful is for creating these tests. So you know that the changes that you made to your code don't break something. Um, so a lot of people, what they'll actually do is come up with the tests before they write their scripts uh, and then write their script and then run it against the tests to make sure that the tests actually pass and are working correctly. Um, that could be like a very advanced topic, depending on where you guys are in the process. Um, it is definitely a big learning experience uh, using Pester. Um, it is unit testing is a lot bigger in software engineering, maybe not so much like automation, uh, but Pester does make that available to you to test your PowerShell scripts. And that's what I really wanted to show you guys that today. So I hope that kind of clarifies how to use Pester. Um, and there's actually other things that you can do with Pester. So here we have our Invoke Pester. Let's say, um, because we're going to be seeing this very shortly on the channel, 
um, we're going to be bringing up an Elastic or an Elk Stack server. So what we can actually do is invoke our pester and have an output file. Uh, so let's do our output file. Let's store that to C scripts um, intermediate tutorials and then our pester. And then I'm going to output that to output.xml. And then we're going to have our output format as n unit XML. So if we actually run this here, we're going to get an XML file, as you can see at the top here. And this actually gives us the full blown results of our test. So it gives us all of our test results at the top here. Um, so we can see that we have total of one, um, everything passed. So if we actually look here at the bottom here, so PowerShell pester, executed true result is a success success is true tells us the amount of time it took and then we have our results here so we have our test suite um, which is checking deployment it executed it's got a success uh, we've got the name here we got the checking deployment as the description and then we have our results here we got test case making sure that the print spooler is stopped and we have that as a success as well. So if you wanted to, you could actually push this to your logging system or to your seam or your sim um, and have a record of all the tests. So if you have a team of different developers or different scripters, uh, they can run the tests and you can have it output to a specific location where then you will have your elastic pick up those files and then um, you will have that available and always be able to look at the history and see uh, which test passed or if something gets pushed into production without getting the tests executed, you'd easily be able to find out um, if the tests weren't executed or maybe you did push it into production and there's a problem, but all the tests succeeded. So that would give you a little bit of an idea of you. we need to write another test maybe to figure out um, what went wrong to be able to prevent that in the future. So that's really what Pester is for. There are a lot of options with Pester as well. This was just like a very basic example, but as you could probably tell, there are a lot of things that you could test with Pester. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. What I'm going to probably do as well is with our next big project for the channel, I am also going to write a full pester test for that module with you guys. Um, so you guys can get a little bit more practice with the pester uh, scripts and pester commands and be able to write out your full first unit test with a module and get a lot more comfortable with executing those. So I thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys in the next video.